Welcome to another episodes of Carl's Trains, and uh, on today's episode, a lights, camera, action. But, uh, yeah, so these we actually had to get custom manufactured. Um, couldn't find ones the right size, which was uh, quite interesting actually. But uh, yeah, these are LEDs to replace the original fluoro style lights. Um, much more power efficient, um, and obviously a lot more options than you have with. Uh, with fluorescent styles, but yeah, now these look uh, these look pretty good. Now the challenge is going to be installing them. These are two are temporary installs. We've just been experimenting with mounting techniques. Got to look at actually work out why you've been installing them. Obviously, you have a lot of vibration up here, so we're actually reusing the original mounts and part of the original um, part of the original fluoro fittings to actually mount them up. So that'll be my project for the day. Won't take too long. Uh, get them all installed, or as many installs as we can possibly, and yeah, get get some switched on. So we uh, got to do some measurements, uh, get the holes in the right spots, uh, get all adjusted, get the right length machine screws, which is probably going to take the longest time. Um, probably take a, maybe a week to order them in. I've got to measure, work out what size I need. This has all got to be quite precise. So we've got the uh, trusty steel ruler. And uh, yeah, work in the middle. I like working in the metal shop, but uh, get all this actually lined up and get the uh, find the right size screws. Make sure we can actually do it this way, which I haven't determined yet, but I will, and I'll let you know. And uh, yeah, get some lights installed. So yeah, so if we, we just have to line this up on the inside, get it in the right spots, and off we go. So we're gonna do some measurements. This was all a bit of a compromise. So whilst we could screw it into the masonite in the ceiling, that would be very bad because there is no reinforcement behind it. Um, so I'm very reluctant to do that. Uh, we could add reinforcing and all the rest of it, but it's, a, it's just not a good idea. And they'll shake loose very quickly. So what we're doing is reusing, these are the old fluoro light housings. We've stripped out all the fluoro light components. We're keeping the terminal blocks. We're also mounting in, this is where, also this is a good spot. We can mount the LED drivers and anything else we need to mount in here. We've got a couple mounted already. All we really need to do is make sure we line all this up, get the holes lined up, and then we'll be able to uh, yeah, mount it on, probably putting a couple of screws, machine screws through the back here, drill some extra holes, a couple of machine screws, double nut them, and then uh, put these up, put the threads through here, and then either use a, said either use a blind, uh, uh, blind uh, cap, like a Chicago screw, or, or, use a, or even just a nut and we put the cap on. It's, it won't be a big deal either way. So yeah, I'm gonna go and get all this measured up. One of the problems we're having is that these things, I've already, we always straighten this one, is that these uh, these lips are a bit all over the place. So we've, this one's been hit with my, not too bad. This, a bit, this one's been hit with my sort of rudimentary panel beating skills. And it's a lot better shape now. But we've actually come up with a mechanism by cutting effectively slots and we'll cut these off of course these screws aren't permanent uh these are just a temporary just to see what size would fit we're going to put a standoff and the screw will come from the other side so obviously you can screw it back internally but for today's a sizing exercise we did this so yes we now have a proper way to actually assemble the lights by modifying the original fittings which was the entire exercise in the first place otherwise we would have issues with vibration we don't want lights falling on people's heads very temporary 8 volts we'll uh, go install proper batteries we've got the battery boxes now all installed so we've just got to run some wiring from down there up to here and into our distribution box right now i'm just using the temporary breakers down here but we'll be able to get we'll get these sort, this sorted out fairly shortly these were where the railways converted it to local hall they completely changed over the wiring for the lighting so we had to trace all of these out um and figure out where they all went it was actually quite straightforward in the end there's one that controls as, as one set for the saloon there's like a well, full saloon there's a half saloon and there's a vestibule it was pretty straightforward in the end uh those who know i'm actually a stickler for labeling of things so i've just temporarily labeled these um these aren't the permanent labels i'm going to give these proper names because it's not even on the loco hall schematic these don't exist so I'm going to adjust the schematic uh, to show 
uh, to give these new names and I'll relabel them accordingly. This collection here, we need to extend it and bring it into our new electrical cabinet here. And we'll use this conduit here, which we haven't tied to the wall yet, but we've just put in and that'll connect up to that back there. So that's the first job for the day. You can extend this wiring. This here is the, uh, is the wiring for the local vestibule lights in the, in the front, in the number two end. So we know where they connect to. We've got that uh, all worked out, the cable tracer. This here is the PA wiring. So we'll extend this as well and bring this down the same conduit. So we're gonna get PA as well, which will be very nice. Um, yeah, so the first thing to do, I guess, is uh, get some of this wiring sorted out. This is our, still our bit of our temporary install. These are obviously gonna be replaced by screws and standoffs. I showed you before how we're gonna do the, uh, how we're gonna modify the housings. Yeah, these two were uh, screwed into the housing, but I'm not particularly happy with the way they were done. So they were a temporary, but we'll take those down. Now we've got our final way of doing it. So said so these are these were just very very temporary nuts put in place just to uh, fit it, but I'll put proper standoffs and screws, and then we can put the caps over them so you won't see it. And we're gonna have a little bit of illumination. Turn them on. There we go. And if we step back this way, you can see we're gonna have plenty of light in here, so it's already starting to look much better. So turn them off. So you can yeah you can see it's uh, it's fitting reasonably flush to the ceiling. There's a little bit of, we notice a little bit of overhang here from the original housing that we're just going to cut back as well when we when we machine those down. But yep, they sit quite flush to the ceiling. This one could be up a bit more because I haven't really tightened these up. But for today, it will do. And we step back at a full wide view and turn them on. There we go. So. Yeah, bit of a process, but won't take us too much longer and we will get through all of the lights and the vestibule lights and much more power efficient and much better than the 240 volt originals. So we don't need 240 volt power. These are all running off 48 volts, which is gonna be the main voltage in this vehicle with 24 volts for control. Yes, thank you for your donations, guys. We've got there a little bit of machine to do, but nothing we, uh, nothing we can't handle. And uh, yeah, we'll have a full set of lights, which is one of the thing, key things we wanted before coming into winter. So we can work in the inside here in the evenings. So yeah, it's a matter of getting onto a few other things I've got to do today now and uh, hope we'll cover those soon. Cheers.